Hey guys, welcome back to another Whip Wednesday. I think this is number 18. It's crazy how fast they go by. So I am working on this page here. I started it on Mother's Day and I just haven't gotten around to finishing it. It's super adorable though. So it's from Genovia Art. She is on Etsy. I'll leave a link in the description below. But it was a really cute picture. I just like, I saw it a few days before Mother's Day and I was like, no, I bought enough PDFs this month. I can't buy another one. And then it just kept calling to me. So I bought it and I started it on Mother's Day. Just doing it with Prismacolors. I think it's so freaking cute though, isn't it? Look at that. Just, oh, it's adorable. So my husband, before I start coloring this, was joking with me that I could draw these myself or he could draw, start drawing these. And so I was like, okay, recreate this image. And <laughs> this is what he drew in, let me zoom out, in 10 minutes, oops, wrong way. In 10 minutes, that's what he drew. <laughs> he did like a rough sketch. It was super cute and really sweet of him. And actually not too bad considering he spent only uh, 10 minutes doing that. But I think I'll stick with this one. <laughs> Good effort. Good effort. But that was something he did for Mother's Day. But yeah, so I'll keep coloring on this. Like I said, I'm just using my Prisma colors. They are pretty worn down though, so I'm gonna have to sharpen. Let's, let's get going. Um, where did I leave off? Oh, I left off on her tail. So yes, I hope everyone had a wonderful Mother's Day. Get that sharpened. I don't know if you're like me. Um, I'm like one of those people where it's Mother's Day. I don't want to be a mom that day. Like, I want the day off from motherhood. So, it's, uh, everyone's different. Like, I have some friends that want to do a ton of stuff. Like, one that was going camping. That's, like, their Mother's Day tradition. She loves to just do everything. And I always feel weird because people are like, well, what do you want for Mother's Day? I'm like, I don't want to be a mom today. I want to be, you know, have the day off. Everyone leave me alone. Self-serve. <laughs> I don't know. Figure it out. And uh, I've gotten some weird, like, looks from other people. And then there's others who are exactly the same way and totally get it. So, don't know how you celebrated yours. Um, I just kind of chilled, watched a lot of color tube. Um, obviously started coloring this page here. It was pretty laid back. We just did some dinner at our house. My husband was off duty, so he cooked for me. And then that weekend, we just kind of, yeah, didn't do much. And that is like my perfect Mother's Day weekend. No chores, no demands. I just got to sit and veg out and just, ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, the only thing I had to do was we took our dog um, to her board and train program. We ended up hiring this guy. He's like the dog whisperer of the state um or one of them there's a few of them out here but anyway he used to train like canines for the military for um drugs and guns and then he also worked for the for atf so he now has a board and train business basically you drop your dog off you can either do a two-week or a three-week program we did the three-week just because uh, you get more results that way uh, the two week he can only really dive into basic stuff, but he's going to work on a lot of things like, you know, correcting any bad behaviors, um, and all that. And the biggest one is like getting her off leash, which I'm still surprised at because, uh, huskies from everything I've read and other husky owners, you can't have your husky off leash because they have such a high prey drive that they will just run and, you know, be crazy and <laughs> just take off. And we've had a lot of issues with her just taking off um, while the fence was being done. She would run away, and she does not come when called. But it's not 
that she doesn't know you're calling her. Huskies are very, very smart breeds, um, but they're also incredibly stubborn. They're very hard to train. They require like tons of hours and you just gotta like be very patient because they, seriously, they'll like, they know you're Im getting impatient and flustered and they'll screw with you <laughs> like ours. I swear she purposely tries to make my son cry. It's, it's semi funny, but not funny. Um, but like, she just, she likes to torment him and, uh, he's like almost 13. So it's not like she's picking on a little kid here. Uh, but yeah, like if you call her, she'll look straight at you, make eye contact and you know, she knows what you're saying because of the way she looks at you and then she takes off. And the problem with that is when we were waiting for our fence, which is now done, she would chase after cars. And I mean, she, I'm surprised she didn't get hit by a car. I'll be completely honest. I thought for sure she wasn't going to make it. Um, but she just runs away. And this guy guarantees he can get them off leash. And he's actually trained multiple huskies. <clears throat> so we're by no means his first husky experience. <laughs> he knows huskies very well. Just because a lot of clients with Huskies will bring them to him because they're very stubborn. They're If you don't have the time to sit there and devote like multiple hours a day and just steadily throughout the week to break them of that stubbornness and you just won't ever get anything. And I, I wish I had the time because I hate saying, oh, I don't have time. I did when we first got her. It's just these more advanced training things like off-leash training that... That takes a lot of work, especially with a high prey drive breed like Huskies and the fact that she's stubborn on top of it because, you know, it's part of their breed. And I just, I don't have the time for that. <clears throat> so he's going to get her off leash, you know, she'll come when she's called. She'll also, he's going to work on the jumping because she jumps on everyone. And I have tried every like thing out there. I've watched videos, I've read books. I've tried all the different techniques, and I cannot get her to not jump on people. She won't jump on me, um, and she doesn't jump on my kids anymore, but she'll jump on, like, everyone else, including little kids when they come over, and she is no longer a little puppy. She is, like, 65 pounds of pure muscle. <laughs> that dog is solid. <laughs> so when she jumps on someone, she's going to take someone out, and I don't want, like, someone to get hurt here. Um, and it's not because she's aggressive. She's super friendly. Like, she just wants to play and say hi. But her way of saying hi is jumping all over you. So, <clears throat> you know, he'll work on that. And then um, a whole bunch of other things. But, and then, like, the leash tugging. Because I love taking her for walks. But she right now is just so strong. Huskies are sled dogs, too, so it's like a natural instinct to pull. But she is freakishly strong. I mean, if I was on an inner tube in the snow, she could probably straight up tug me. And I'm not light, um, but she is a very strong dog. And when I try to walk her or even take her into the freaking groomer, she's just bouncing all over the place. She's out of control, like hyper. And she tugs, like, it kills my shoulder. One time I took her for a walk, and I came home, and I was just like, oh my gosh, my shoulder is dying. My husband doesn't see or have that issue, one, because he's a lot stronger than me, but two, he takes her running. So she has no reason to tug because he's running, and she's running alongside of him. So, like, he's going at the speed she wants to be going. <clears throat> so... He's going to leash train her because I have I've been trying to get her to heal and she just won't. She tugs and all that. And basically his thing is, is he's like, yeah, by the end of this program, your dog will be on a leash for show, not because she actually needs it. Um, and he'll actually keep her for free until she's off leash if she isn't ready at the end of the three weeks to go home or if she hasn't like learned all of the things that are included in his training program. He keeps them for free until they are fully trained on everything that's part of it. Because there's a whole bunch of things in his program, not just the leash training and that. But yeah, he's correcting like all the bad behaviors and 
uh, like even teaching her, you know, because she play bites a lot. She doesn't bite me um, because she recognizes me as her alpha. So she listens to me other than when I call her. That's when she's like, yeah, I don't care. But she doesn't jump on me. She doesn't bite me. But she'll play bite with my husband and the kids. And then, like, anyone that comes over, she's very bitey. And again, not to hurt anyone. She's just stupid friendly and wants to play because that's how dogs play. But she won't bite me. She knows better. Um, but she'll nip at the kids, like, if they're also putting on her leash and she doesn't want it on or... You know, stuff like that, and I, she needs to knock it off. <clears throat> Again, she won't do it to me, because, um, I guess because I'm the one that trained her when she was a puppy. You know, she realizes I'm the alpha, so I'm not the one to screw with. But, I mean, I don't need her nipping at the kids, or play biting, or actually hurting someone when she bites too hard. Even if she doesn't, she's not intentionally trying to harm, um, you know, that, like... Your dog bites someone and that gets reported. Not only does your dog get taken away for a while, but I don't want like to get sued by someone because my dog was play biting and got a little too aggressive. And But again, she's like super sweet dog, like so sweet and friendly. So she's not biting to hurt anyone. She's just a big dork that wants love. <laughs> and that's the best way to put it. But yeah, so we dropped her off on Mother's Day and... We will find out. Uh, even the guy when we dropped her off, he's like, oh, I already know I'll have three or five days where she and I are going to butt heads just because that's how huskies are. And then he's like, eventually they finally give in. And they're like, okay, fine, whatever. You win. You're in charge. I'll learn. But he's like super confident in it. And he's been doing this for years. And like I said, he's trained like actual canines and all that. And he's a... I, Guy has like great reviews. A rare, a rare thing to find is someone with 5.0 review score on Google. He has like not a single negative review, and he's got like hundreds of them. But he's cool. And then like after this whole training program, like when we go to pick her up, we have a huge like taking home lesson, and he'll basically teach all the commands, you know, rules. But then also he does two follow-up visits where he comes to our actual house to see how she's doing, correct any issues, like say she's reverted on something, he'll work on correcting it and see if we're causing it. Um, but yeah, he'll do two in-home visits. And then after that, you can always pay for him to come back and do more too, but he said that he's rarely had to do that unless a dog has like serious behavioral problems, which ours doesn't. But yeah, it was weird waking up the next day because normally I wake up in the morning and then it's, you know, I grab my water bottle, I grab my um, cell phone, and then I walk out to the kitchen and I let her out. And so it was kind of, you know, weird because I, I got up and I'm like, oh, right, I don't have a dog to let out. So yeah, that was kind of strange at first, but... It'll be all right. I do miss that little stinker, though, because she follows me everywhere in the house, and it's so funny. <laughs> Sometimes I feel bad, but it's not like she's old, so she needs to get her butt up and moving, but, like, I'll be working in my office, so she'll come lay next to me, or if I'm recording a video, she's always laying next to me. And then, say I get up to go, like, to the restroom, she'll follow me and sit outside the door, lay down, and just wait for me. I'll go get up to like refill my water and there she is. She'll follow me, lay down right outside the kitchen and just wait for me. <laughs> so it's been kind of weird not having my little buddy tail in me everywhere I go. Sometimes I would feel bad though. I'm like, I'm just getting water. I'll be right back. You could chill where you were. <clears throat> but that part's a little strange. I don't have to get used to that, but... It's uh, It'll be good for her, and he sends, like, updates, and I can't wait to just go pick up my dog and see all the things she's learned. And normally we would never have done this, but we really love this dog, and it's just we really want to, one, not let her get hit by a car, because she could still, even though we have a fence now, she could totally escape, um, because... 
the ground is a little bit low compared to the fence line. That's because we're having fill dirt added and topsoil for sod. So they had to keep the fence line a little high to accommodate that. Like if they would have made it perfectly flush to the ground right now, then a big chunk of our fence would get covered by dirt, <laughs> you know, when they go to excavate. So um, she could totally, like if the ground was nice and soft, just dig a hole right under our fence right now and take off. So we want her to come when called for sure, but also we didn't fence off the full property. So we have an entire acre behind us unfenced right now. And it would be so fun to just take her out to that acre, play fetch or, you know, like have her just run and do whatever she wants, but then know that if I call her, she comes back. Like, but it would just be nice to go like do things on the other end of our property that we need to do without having to chain up the dog and be awesome to take her to family functions without her jumping on, you know, like my husband's parents who, um, you know, are older and even my mom who's older and not like see them get knocked down by my, my husky. So that'll be a good one. Even my son's friends, when they come over, she just insta jumps on them. And I'm like, oh, she's going to like knock someone down my stairs one day, I swear. But... Yeah, so we're doing that with her, and the only reason is we just, you know, we had that extra money from our equity, so we were able to do a few things that we've always wanted to do, and most people are like, let's go to Hawaii, and we're like, let's train our dog, that's where our money goes, but uh, none of, we're not really in a vacation spot right now in our lives, school isn't out yet, we'll be soon, I can't wait. I am so over this at-home learning. I oh, was so over it. I needed it done like yesterday. My kids will definitely be going back this fall. It's not that I don't love them. I just don't love the whole online schooling because then, you know, they give me an attitude or skip things and then get cranky when they have a bunch of makeup homework because they didn't do it but said they did. And... My, I have a full-time job at home, and it's just getting too much. It's one thing, like, if they're here and not being educated, like, you know, in the summer and, like, with my toddler. But, I mean, my older ones, they're doing a lot of complicated homework. And I just, unfortunately, with work lately, don't have the time, and I hate that. They, I don't want their education to suffer, so... But also for my sanity, <laughs> they really need to go back to school. I'm sure they would agree. They need socialization, too. Right. Socialization and sanity, that's what it's for. <clears throat> oh, but, like I said last week, so I said I saw them laying lines for the good internet company. <laughs> So I just so happened to be bringing the kids home from one of the kids baseball or softball practices. I don't know which. That's all I do now is go to baseball and softball practices every day of the week practically. But um, I had just pulled up and the guy from Xfinity happened to be out there. And he's like, hey, uh, those lines they laid, they did all the boxes. And that means you are ready to like hook up. Do you want to sign up now? And I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> like, I don't need to think about it. It's just straight yes. Um, and so he uh, got us all set up. And I was like, no, give me the whatever the soonest date you have. Give me that. And so it was Saturday before Mother's Day. So they came out and installed it. Oh, my gosh, I was so giddy. It was like a freaking kid at Christmas. <laughs> I kid you not. When the tech got here, I was just like, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy. <laughs> like, And then even when they were, like, signing me up, he's like, well, what speed do you want? I'm like, the fastest one you got. I want as fast as humanly possible. Anything fast. And so we had a gigabyte one at our old house, but now they offer 1.2 gigabytes. So I was like, ooh. So I got that one. Yeah. Um, after they installed it, they have the modem in my office. <laughs> it's 
so I get the hard line and don't have to Wi-Fi it. Oh my gosh, it is so fast. I mean, I had this at my old house, but after a month of dealing with this crappy internet, like where my son couldn't even like stream at night, <laughs> like it was bad. He couldn't even like watch TV at night. I felt kind of bad there. Because anyone on Wi-Fi on our old one didn't even get one megabit per second. So if enough of us were streaming at once, like one of us got no internet. So yeah, on Monday I called and canceled with the other company. And I flat out told them, I was like, your internet speeds are awful. And worse, they were supposed to not bill me for the full speed. And I had just gotten a bill for the full speed. So I even told the guy, I was like, man, you guys can't even, like, uphold your promises. And, and uh, I mean, the amount I was paying for their supposed 50 megabytes per second, though I wasn't even getting close to that, I am paying 20 bucks more for 1.2 gigs of internet. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys can just go away. Uh, so I have to return the equipment. And at first the guy was like, yeah, we require that you return the satellite. I'm not getting it on my roof and pulling a satellite down. You want this satellite, you come get the satellite. You're the ones that went up there. And so they're going to come out and remove it. But I was like, has anyone ever actually agreed to getting on their roof and removing a satellite? Because um, I'm not doing that. Like, we've got some crazy pitched, very high roof tops up here um and you guys installed it like I don't even know how to remove it and like then I don't want to damage it and you guys try to charge me for that so no you come remove that I'll gladly send back your routers and whatnot but I'm not re removing it that one was just weird oh no my pencils I don't know if it's gonna fit in here nope it's not I don't know if I've shown you guys this trick um with Prisma colors. Let me go grab a spare of this one and I will show you. Okay. So if I'm using like my Tagal sharpener, I can usually go a teensy bit longer. But if I'm using my doll, I just realized those both sound very alike. Tagal and doll. Um, if I'm using my doll, this won't fit in there anymore. So what I do is I take a brand spanking new one and I tape these two together like that so that I can keep sharpening the end of this one. And let me see if I have like one nearby. So using that method, taping them together, this is how much pencil, whoop, I can't even hold it, it's so tiny, you can end up using. And the only reason I had to stop at this point was because that's where the tape was and you don't want to get the tape gunk in any sharpener you use. But look at that, like that's a ton and I'm okay throwing that out. So that's what I do with my pencils when they get too small. You just have to make sure you tape oops, close enough to the edge but then also you don't want it um, too short on tape because otherwise it'll keep breaking apart on you. And then yeah, you just tape it and you'll have an abnormally large pencil for a little bit, I know. If it's really annoying you, then start using this end and sharpening it down. But there's my pencil that will now fit in my doll. It has sharpened and like I said then you can get them down to that itty bitty amount it's like insane because without that you'd be throwing it out a lot sooner like I mean I can get them in my Tagal and the little hand sharpener for a tiny bit more but not to that length so just a little trick that I use I think I've seen a few other colorists use it too it's not like anything I invented by any means. Um, came to me one day, but then I've seen other colorists also do it, so it, it must have come to them one day as well. <laughs> so maybe it's like a common sense thing that I don't know. But at the time, I was like, oh, that's a nifty idea. And then I saw a few other colorists doing it. I'm like, oh, well, at least I'm 
in line with it or savvy like the rest. But yeah, the only thing is like if you're coloring on camera, then you have to make sure you don't smack the camera with your abnormally large pencil. Basically with a fin here, I like to do kind of like what I do with hair, but a little lighter. Just bring the color up. And then I uh, fill in the center with white or sometimes like one of the pale <clears throat> sage colors or something. But in this case, I'm doing white. And then when I'm done with everything, I go and outline the fins in white gel pen. So it looks a lot better. I would show you, but I need to spray it with a workable fixative first because that waxy layer. My Arteza gel pens used to work on top of that waxy layer, but now they're not. Like I need to spray it with fixative for any of my gel pens to really grip on there. I don't know if it's <clears throat> because the, I don't know, it worked before, but now it doesn't. Cause that used to be what made them so cool was like you know I don't have to go spray this first like the gel pen works on top of it but it won't grip it right now especially with the prismas because they are just so waxy do I make sure I get that close yeah so I have good internet um, I've been recording my hair series video and so for that one, I'm actually doing a full color along. So if you want to see how I do her skin in polys, you can watch that. Or you can just watch part two with the hair. But with my old internet that we first got out here, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies or something. Um, like I said, it would take forever to upload like a 15 minute video. Like I'd have to leave my computer on overnight. And that was really obnoxious. So I waited until the tech left uh, to upload the hair section of my video because it was a two hour video. Because <laughs> so what I did is I did the entire head of hair. Uh, some of it is me explaining it. Others are sped up. So even with it sped up, it was two hours. And I was like, oh, no way. On my old internet, this will take like four days to upload. <laughs> so I waited till the tech left and I had the good internet. And I went and uploaded it, and it uploaded in four hours. I was so excited. Our upload speeds, by the way, are not a gig. No one offers that other than the <clears throat> like Google Fiber companies and stuff like that. But um, we still have like 50 megabytes per second upload, whereas the other company was barely one. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm totally fine with a two-hour video taking four hours. I am good with that because now Whip Wednesdays can be recorded on Wednesday or, you know, at least the Tuesday night before or something, but not having to record it like on a Sunday or Monday just to account for upload times is great. Then I'm not talking like, oh yeah, on Wednesday this is going to happen because <laughs> I feel so weird. I'm like, hi, welcome to Whip Wednesday being filmed on a Monday. that. Uh, I might need to add more dark to this fin. It rained, so I think <clears throat> it kicked up a bunch of allergens or something. I don't know. Okay, maybe I'll use my darker one in there also. Yeah, this is just how I do mermaid tails most of the time. Sometimes I'll mix in like purples and pinks and make it more look like fairy wings, but kind of keeping it a little simpler, I guess you could say, with this one. Let's see if I can't get these through. Oh man, canceling the old internet. Gosh, that was a nightmare. I thought it was bad to cancel a Comcast, but these guys now take the cake. Not only was I on hold for like 20 minutes just trying to get 
a hold of someone to tell them I wanted to cancel. They sat there and made me verify every single detail for my, my account, <laughs> like more than any company has ever done in my life. And then after all of that, they go, oh, well, let me transfer you to our solutions department. And I'm like, I don't need a solution. The solution is to cancel. Like, So then I wait on hold for 30 minutes. I kid you not. I almost feel like they do that on purpose, like, because she knew I was wanting to cancel. So it's almost like I felt as though they were purposely putting you on hold to see if you would stick it out, you know, or just say, oh, never mind. No, I just put it on speaker, kept working, and when they finally came on, like, the guy would not let up. Like, he's just like, well, what if I offered you a free month? I'm like, a free month is not going to make up for, like, the crappy internet speeds here, dude. <laughs> like, what part of I'm not paying anything because you're not giving me even, like, a fourth of the speed you're charging me for? He's like, yeah, I mean, I see you're paying a lot of money, and I'm thinking in my head, I know, especially when I just, like, ten times the speed of your guys right now for 20 bucks more a month. But yeah, he would, like, he was relentless. He just kept offering everything, and I was just like, dude, I know you're trying to do your job, but listen, man, I'm canceling no matter what you offer me. I've already got internet installed. Like, just cancel this, like, now. But, um... Once he realized, like, there was no changing my mind, you know, he went about the process. He was nice. He wasn't, like, a jerk about it, but it's just, like, and I know it's just their job, you know. They're told to, like, do whatever they can to keep customers. I get it. But at the same time, after leaving me on hold for 30 minutes, I was getting kind of cranky, and I just wanted the service canceled. Like, I didn't want to sit there and have to continue to argue with you. It's just like, dude, cancel my service, okay? Like, simple enough. But that was finally taken care of. Thank goodness. Uh, let's see. Debating what color. I haven't decided because I think these things up here are pearls. And then up here are bubbles. Like, I'm going to do the background in blue. I'm thinking I might even use what I got. Let me show you. Maybe. These came on Friday. I haven't played with them yet. But they're the Iridescent Gelatos. And I have a couple blues, actually. But I was thinking of, like, either the aquamir Aquamarine or the Blue Topaz for my background. But I need to finish everything else first and then spray it with a workable fixative. Let's see, what do we have left? I got a little seaweed thingy here. At least I'm going to call it seaweed. I just wanted to do really bright colors on this. I'm not really going for realism. I mean, it is mermaid. Yeah, this was such a cute picture. And like I said, I was trying to resist because I bought a lot of PDFs this month. There were so many cute ones, um, <clears throat> but I finally ended up just buying it because I was like, no, it's just too cute to pass up. Perfect for Mother's Day. Very adorable. Once I finish it, if I would have thought ahead, I could have like finished it and given it to like my mom or someone for <laughs> Mother's Day, but I didn't think that quick. This still works for mermaid and all that, so. I think the little bed she's laying on, I'm going to like color in grays. Because I really don't want it to take away from the whole picture. <clears throat> like I did this little sea sponge almost, <laughs> is what I picture it as. Um, I did that in yellow. But yeah, like this you know, rock thing she's laying on. I definitely want to do that in gray. That way she stands out, but then the background also, because, you know, that'll be all blue. Uh, oh, that's more, so that's a seashell also. <clears throat> I've been kind of just making all my seashells like this peachish, peachish color. Let's 
see. I'm really just keeping it super simple. <laughs> I'm not going, I have a very limited color palette and but I'm okay with it. Like I, I wanted it simple because I was coloring it on Mother's Day and first I thought, oh, this would be a fun one to color on camera, but I, uh, I just didn't have time. Let me rephrase that. I had time because I was doing nothing for Mother's Day, but I just didn't feel like setting it all up and, you know, taking time to do that when I could sit there and do nothing all day. <clears throat> Excuse me. My white is my blender. Give it the kind of iridescent look. White is a fun blender. Well, Prisma White, I should say. Um, just because it makes things look shiny. Okay, and then we got another one here. Do you? Oh, I need some spare paper. Oh, there we go. I want to accidentally rub the mermaid tail we spent all that time making. <clears throat> yeah, there's not much else going on right now. Um, just in the heart of baseball and softball season, like my kids' first game starts this week. So my daughter's game will be tonight and my son's game uh, tomorrow night. And then it'll be twice a week after that. And then I don't know what they're doing with practices yet. I know my daughter's team will be practicing, but it sounds like my son's coach has zero plans of practicing. So um, we'll find out. Part of me is like, oh, okay, that works, whatever. Uh, less driving. Because <laughs> right now it's like, with their games, Monday through Thursday, we'll be at the ballpark. And then I know my daughter may be doing practices Fridays or Saturdays. They haven't decided yet. But then I'm like, oh, if my son practices, where is he going to fit that in? And I'm glad none of the coaches have picked, like, weekdays because, um, you know, if one of my kids has a game, I, it's kind of like I have to decide, well, okay, well, I'm dropping you off. And, and then if my husband's on duty, it's like, well, who's going to watch this one? <laughs> like, it's... A lot of juggling. And I don't even know how it's going to work when my third one gets into sports. Oh, that's going to be interesting. But yeah, like, uh, this season's super short, but it works out well. Because in the summer, my son's here for a week, and then at his dad's for a week. And uh, his dad is not in as into sports as we are, so... It's less fights and negotiations and hassle if it doesn't overlap into summer too much. I think it only overlaps like two weeks. So that'll be good. Um, and then we don't have to worry about that. Because there was one year where it was just uh, a lot of fighting. And yeah, I, I get so envious because I have a few friends, you know, the split home thing and but they don't have that problem. Like, the other parent is, like, totally on board, you know, goes to the games, all cool about it. No, no like, fights or negotiations. So, it's like, how oh, would that be like? Like, if my husband and I ever divorced, we'd be those parents that are totally fine with it. But we're never getting divorced because we've already made that clear. I was like, even if you hate me, you're just going to have to sleep in the basement. We're stuck together forever. All right. How should I color those pearls? Hmm. I feel like... <clears throat> so here's my color palette. And it's kind of almost a challenge for myself. Oh, I guess I should put these back in here. So here's my abnormally large pencil. <laughs> and this is what I mean. It's so large it doesn't fit there. But, um... Oh, I got those in the wrong order. Yeah, with the pearls, because I was challenging myself to do kind of a limited palette, keep it simple and fun, don't have like 40 billion colors. 
I do want like some purples and pink, or in this case, peach. This pink might be too much, but maybe we'll use the aqua and white. Yeah, let's try that. I gotta sharpen a couple of these though first. I mean, they could be rocks, but to me, they, it'd make more sense that they were pearls. That's a sharpening. This is why I don't do hair series with Prismacolor. Could you imagine? Ooh. I could do Hannah Lynn hair, because I do hers a little differently, but like realistic hair with all the flicks. We would be there a while. Let's see, so I'll add a little purple here. Some purple here. Purple is going to be my shadow. But yeah, not much else going on. <clears throat> I have awesome internet now, thank goodness. Woo. Um, no one's competing for bandwidth. <laughs> I'm not competing against the neighbors either. Like, I even. Made sure, like at 5 p.m., no speed drops. So that was nice. Um, but yeah, I was, I almost did a live stream over the weekend because I was like, you know, it'd be fun. I could live stream and color this cute little mermaid and mom picture. But then I knew there were so many people doing the mermaid live stream. I didn't want to accidentally, like, step up on anyone's, like, schedule. Or anything like that. I need to look up and see when everyone is streaming. But I also just don't know if I'm quite ready to live stream, <laughs> to be honest. Um, just because, you know, with the kids and the noise and stuff, I just, I can see it going wrong. So I might wait till they're back in school in the fall. And then just like live stream in the day. Although quite a few of you um, have told me you're not really a fan of live streams. So that's another reason I'm not like in a big rush to do it. Because I noticed quite a few of you had mentioned that. But it would be fun to like live chat with you guys while I'm coloring. Oh there. Yeah I like the way those look. They'll look even better. Um, I'll outline them with. My gel pen. Uh, let's see, which one should I? I want a very thin one. Uh, I have a bajillion gel pens. This is what one is this one? This is a 1.0. That's too thick. There's all my Artezas. I've got Jelly Roll. I've got Signo. I've got Artezas. So probably like the 0.6. Let's see if it'll let me. I doubt it. Like I said, my lately my Artezas haven't been sticking. Uh, I don't like the way that looks, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to wipe that off. Maybe I'll just make a little shine line, but if we're going to do that, I want something thicker. And maybe I'll just put some glossy accents over it. So they look all shiny. Yep, see it won't stick. There we go, got some. It's weird because it used to work just fine on top of like a super waxy pencils and now they don't. Has anyone else noticed that with like their Artezas? Let's see like with her little fins here. Yeah, see, it's not even gripping. So yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to spray it. Unfortunately, once I put the workable fixative down, it just gives it that slightly rough enough surface, and then my gel pens can catch on. But they used to like that was one reason I bought them because I had seen them on a few channels. 
and everyone was showing like how awesome they were with, you know, you could go right over your pencil and they stick just fine. And so they did at first, but now they won't grip at all. And I still have a ton of ink. I mean, look at the barrel. I got ink all the way to there. So I don't know. And I find myself like sometimes forgetting to use them because by the time I spray it, then I'm like working on something else or so half the time when I mean to add gel pen accents, I don't. One of these times I want to try like outlining the entire thing before coloring it. So you outline like even the black line and then you color over it. So no more black lines show in your coloring pages. Things look so smooth and just transition like flawlessly. It's a really cool effect. And there's some really talented colorists who do that. It's just so beautiful. I definitely want to try it out. It seems tedious though. Like and they do it on like ultra complicated pages. Sometimes I'm just lazy and I'm like, I just don't want to sit there and do that. Those, I think I'm going to turn into rivets inside the, or divots, rivets, whatever the word is, into the stone. These will make pearls. I think it's divots. I'm not doing anything like in a particular order here either. I'm just kind of randomly adding these colors. You know, because like when you have a pearl in your hand and you move it back and forth, it has like different colors reflecting all over. It's kind of what I'm going for here and then I just blend them all together with the white. And then it gives it that milky finish, which a pearl has. You can use a similar technique with bubbles, just not as brighter colors. I'm still working on perfecting bubbles, though. I mean, technically, I'm still working to perfect everything, because even once I feel like I'm good at something, I still feel like I can always learn something new. That's why I always watch people's tutorials, learn snazzy ways to, like, you know, use a certain medium. And like there's some mediums that I still suck at, like ink tents. I really want to get better at those. And that was one of my 2021 goals. And we're almost halfway through the year and I haven't even picked up an ink tent, so I don't think this entire year. <laughs> oh crap. Okay. I need to do that for sure. That's bad. I just now realized that I honestly don't think I've picked up an ink tents at all this year. No, oh, not a good start to my goals. I know I wanted to use more watercolor. I have been using them, just not as much as I probably should. But at least I have done the watercolors. Mainly for backgrounds, but... Lately, I've been on a drawing kick. Like, I want to start drawing my own coloring pages. Um, I'm not a horrible artist. I'm no Maria Little Deck or anything, but because um, <laughs> I love her work. Uh, yeah, I was going to start because my husband is always telling me, you should just start drawing coloring pages, you know? You, you're really good at art. And, um, but I guess the reason I always haven't is because the the therapy for me is coloring like I'm not creating anything I'm just filling it in it's jumping but I thought you know maybe I'll try it like because I like to draw mandalas but I also like to draw just regular pictures as well so I might start drawing we'll see see if that feeling keeps going because <laughs> I'm Right now I'm like, yeah, I'll do it, but 
it's all about time. So basically I would have to decide, am I going to color or am I going to draw today? And that's what is kind of holding me back and bumming me out. Cause I'm like, I have to pick one or the other cause I don't have that much free time in my day to do both. So, but if you would be interested in seeing any of my drawings or whatnot, maybe I'll start working on those and showing them on Whip Wednesdays. I might even start an Etsy shop with them. We'll see. Oh, there's so many things I want to do and just the time. It would be different if I didn't have to work full time. Like if I didn't have a job that takes 10 to 12 hours out of my weekday, then yeah, totally would be drawing and coloring and all that. And you guys would probably have content every single day, <laughs> but this is the real world. Got to work. Um, yeah, so I'm going to spray these first because this is just not coming off. I think that looks pretty cute. Little pearls. Love this hair color. It's one of my favorites. It's like a reddish pink. It is, in case you're curious, the colors are... And um, for that one, oh gosh, I think this is Black Raspberry, PC1095. Um, okay, 1030. So this, and then Raspberry. All my names are gone. Um, pomegranate. Da, 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 magenta. And then a teensy bit of Process Red is like the highlight. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I use it in my Hannah Lynn books all the time. But I think we're at a pretty good stopping point for now because the next step would be I need to pick out grays to do this base. And I think by the time I did that, <laughs> it would be well over an hour anyway. So let me zoom out a little so you can see the whole thing. Oops, always going the wrong way. Okay, there we go. So yeah. Isn't that a very cute image? I, I mean, kudos to the artist, seriously. Like, this is adorable. Just look at that little baby. I don't know. I just could not get over it. I kept showing my husband, like, isn't this so cute? So, yeah. That is definitely why I bought it. But I'll be finishing the stone and then a couple of, like, her jewelry here. I think I'm going to use, like, a glitter gel pen. And then, yeah, I will take pictures and share it on Instagram. Of course, I gotta remind myself to once I spray it, still come back and do all the white gel pen accents because I swear I always forget. But I'm gonna try to remember this time. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me while I work on this whip. And until next week, take care.